So I'm Naveen, as we've already sorry, um, I uh, helped work on this company with my buddy Dennis called Foursquare. We started this, uh, we started kind of thinking about the ideas uh, and really solidifying them maybe two years ago, something like that, something like late 2008. And in March of 2009, we launched it at the Southwest Southwest Conference uh, in Austin, Texas. So we're about 17 months old now. Um, so Foursquare has actually uh, started because um, both Dennis had an itch to create something uh, that would make it very easy to share, that would make it very easy to uh, share tips and uh, interesting things about uh, cities. We wanted to answer the question, how do we get better at living in our city? It's kind of like a broad question we ask uh, in, in, the, in the background. Um, Foursquare is actually a, a system in three different pieces. Part number one is this idea of checking in. As Susan said, you check in anywhere you go, and the intention is, by doing this, you announce to your friends that you're there. So there's this ambient awareness of where all your friends are. Um, the system helps you keep track of all the places you've ever been. Um, and hopefully, in doing this, um, the more patterns you see and the more data you see, it actually exposes new places for you to go check out. So if you actually see uh, that Andrew checks into this coffee shop every morning that you haven't been to, the idea is that maybe that will get you uh, excited about trying to uh, go see yourself. Um, the second part of Foursquare is, again, the, the core idea of, the core nature of trying to share tips and experiences and uh, interesting stories about the city. So we have the concept of uh, tips, which are kind of like recommendations, but they're more positive things. They're like one-liners, they're 200 char characters of text that you share with your friends at different places. So they could be anything from, oh yeah, go to the bar bar uh, in the middle of the day uh, for a great lunch. Or uh, uh, secrets about, you know, if you go to Angel Share, you should almost get that sofa all the way in the back. So it's almost like a little recommendation, like a little, like, someone, your friend is coming to whisper in your ear as you're, as you're going to a place and telling you exactly what to try there, exactly what to do, in order to make your experience better. Um, and the last part of Foursquare, yeah, so, um, so there are a lot, of, a lot of services like this that do this, right? There are a lot of services that track your location and advertise your friends. There's Google Latitude, there's Luke, there's, uh, uh, bright cut, and there, there have been so many. Um, and there are a lot of services that also handle the idea of reviews. So you can get reviews about places from City Search and, uh, and Yelp and New York Magazine and all these other like various sources. There's, there's so much out there. Um, but the issue with a lot of these single player, uh, 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 issue with a lot of these location-based networks is they're, for the most part, a very single player experience, right? Um, I'm sorry, they don't have a very good single player experience. Uh, they always they often uh, have this like top-down nature of like, well, someone else is going to recommend something, some editor uh, that you don't really know, and then you're going to go do it. Or um, in order to actually use it, you need to get a lot of your friends on it in order for it to be social and useful. Um, so we decided to solve this by introducing the idea of a game into the system. So we said, how do we get you to share more? Right? In an empty system um, that's, that's starting out from scratch, how do you get all your friends on it? How do you get uh, people outside that network on it? So we decided to use game mechanics to try to encourage that kind of behavior. So the idea is by using games, you play against not just your friends, but you play against a system. You play against yourself. And that's where the single player comes in. So essentially, we're asking the question, how do we turn life into a game? How do we turn this action of going out, and exploring a city, and wanting to get good, and wanting to get better at knowing about your city, how do we turn that into a game? Uh, and hopefully by doing that, get you to actually do what we want to do, or what the original question was. Um, so in Foursquare, you get rewards, you get points, you get badges, you get tips, um, and, and you get specials, all these other things that you get for checking in. So every time you check in, uh, it, it, there's like a little secret that's waiting for you, right? Um, if it's the first time you've ever been to a place, um, you get five points for going there. If, it's a, if you bring three or four of your friends, this doesn't actually exist in an early version of the system, you get three or four of your friends out the door on a Friday night, then you should clearly get points for doing that, right? <laughs> um, and uh, so I already covered the tips. The tips are like a more concrete reward of these things. They're experience that you have that you're sharing with your friends. And then when you go to check into a place, it says, oh, Alex has to try this margarita. You're going to really like it. And it kind of makes you feel good. It obviously makes him feel better about uh, the, the nature of this, the stuff that he's leaving in there. Um, and a big element of this is this idea of badges that we came up with. So badges are basically these, um, these adventures that you unlock. The idea of badges basically are more concrete than, uh, than something like points. Badges are something you earn for yourself. The system rewards you with these things, and then you can show off to your, to your friends and your, uh, to your co-workers and to the rest of the world. Badges are a way for you to show off your experience or your personality, right? 
So if I go out a lot late at night, let's say, if I go out four, four nights in a row, I get the vendor badge. <laughs> it's just gives it to me. So none of my friends have to go out with me, none, none of this is where the single player experience is. Just by mere fact that the system knows that I've gone out four nights in a row, I get the vendor. Uh, if I go out to four places in one night, then I get the crop, right? Um, if I go to Brooklyn 20 times, or I believe it's 25 times, then I get the Brooklyn for, Brooklyn for Life badge, the high heart group. Um, and the idea is by earning all these badges and, and, and like displaying it in this like trophy case, you immediately see, you get immediately get a picture of who I am as a person. Um, so it encourages people in a different way to try to go do this. Um, so very similar to how uh, airlines and uh, car companies and all these people, like credit card companies, have like these loyalty programs or all these rewards programs to try to get you to use something and they give you a reward. So every time you use it, you get like, oh, you get $4 off or 4% off or whatever it is. And at the end of the year, these things add up and they take a certain amount of your bill or they, uh, you know, you get goodies on them. Um, so it's a very similar idea. Um, this is actually something from Air New Zealand. If you check in on Foursquare, every time you check in, you get 100 airplane dollars. They recently introduced this. So this is like a, these, these two sides, the old style rewards and new style coming together in one thing. So I thought it would be interesting to show you. Um, so that's step one. Question number two is, how do we use software to try to change people's behavior? So now that we, can, we know we can uh, put in these elements of game mechanics and um, these virtual rewards, as well as real-world rewards, how do we use this to try to influence behavior, right? How can we get you to go try new places that you haven't been to before? Um, how can we get you to take three or four of your friends out? How can we get you to not stay at home all week long? Uh, we see this in other services, right? We see this in Nike Plus, for instance. It tracks all the runs that you ever do, and it shows you, well, here's how you've been doing historically. And then it gives you this idea of challenges. So you set up challenges with your friends, and you say, the person who to run the fewest amount of miles, or the per person who's last to get to 100 miles, has to buy everybody else lunch. So it's a, it's a way to encourage each other to do better in the type of running. Um, other services like, you know, even services that you think are like very old school, and uh, they don't really have much to do with games, try to use some elements of uh, game theory, right? Um, Facebook and LinkedIn use this idea of a progress bar. So if you don't fill out your profile to a certain degree of satisfaction, uh, that's determined by whoever most, uh, most likely LinkedIn's engineers, um, you have to, uh, it, it gives you a progress bar that says, you know, you're only, your profile's only 50% complete. The idea is to get it to 100%. And every time you come to your profile, you see, ah, I'm just not doing good. So I gotta be better at this. I gotta be better at this game. And the idea is that they want you to fill out your profile because the more data they have, the more valuable the service becomes. Um, and the more valuable the network becomes. Facebook does the same thing. So my mom joined, this is like two years ago, um, or, and it shows a little progress and it says, she's only 20% of the way to filling out a friend profile to what she should really be. So you should encourage her to do this. So encourage not just her, but everybody else that comes to her page to say, she knows more people than this. Like she, she could be more involved in, in your life and your network. Uh, there's an app called Lose It that uh, takes this to, uh, to, to help, basically. Um, the idea here, you know, some people want to lose weight, some people want to gain weight. There are all these fitness goals that you have, and how can you actually get to meeting these goals? So it tracks everything you eat, so you obviously have to enter it in every single time you eat or exercise, and it tracks your budget, and it tells you whether you hit your goals for a day or not. And the second thing it does is it actually compares you with your friends, um, because by making it social and by, by, giving it, uh, by giving this data to a close network of friends, you can actually get better by talking about it and like, trying to help each other get better at it. Um, uh, so on Facebook, we started noticing that people are really like taken to this, all these stimuli that we're giving them, all these rewards and all these different things. And uh, for instance, uh, we came up with this idea called the gym rat. So the gym rat is basically a badge that you're rewarded if you go to the gym uh, 10 times in a month. Um, it's kind of an easy thing to do if you think about it, if you're really into gyms um, or if you're really into fitness, but most people don't even do 10 times a month, right? So we came up with this badge and we actually got this feedback. This guy says, Foursquare has got me going to the gym again. If only to get that gym rat badge. <laughs> <laughs> Last line is classic. Nothing else has motivated me until now. 